Good morning, saints. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. I'm Minister Robbie, but you can call me Robbie. And I'm Beth. And this is Cyber Sunday School from Mount Calvary Community Church, the biggest little church in Omaha. And today's uh, date, September the 5th, our lesson is Moses and Miriam, praise God, hallelujah. And by the end of this lesson, we will explore why and how Moses and Miriam praise God, reflect on the actions of God that are celebrated through music, dance, and words, and celebrate God's faithfulness with joy. But before we begin today's lesson, we will begin as we do each day in a word of prayer. Father God, we call upon you in the name of our Savior Christ Jesus, giving you thanks, Lord God, for another day, Father. You are worthy of praise, Father God, and that's why Moses and Miriam praised you, Father God. We lift you up today, Father God, and we pray that your word goes out to all who hear it, Father. And I pray that you touch our bishop, Father God, and give him wisdom and the strength to lead us. We give you glory, honor, and praise by faith in the matchless name of our Savior Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, today's lesson will come from the book of Exodus. Uh, Exodus uh, chapter 15, verses 11 through 21. And we're going to also read the In Focus story, which is a story that helps to put the biblical lesson in today's modern terms. And that will be read by the beautiful Minister Beth. Fire department, call out over here. <clears throat> Ramona cried, coughing. The smoke stung her eyes and was so thick that she couldn't see where the voice was coming from. The disaster had been sudden. One moment, she was typing away at her desk. The next, there was a quick rumble from the ground that shook the floor and shattered the floor to the ceiling windows. Part, <clears throat> excuse me, part of the ceiling frame fell to the floor, dragging down tiles and light fixtures. Some of the sprinklers came on and drenched everything nearby, but others were broken. The way to exit stairs was blocked with flaming debris. Ramona prayed, Heavenly Father, please bring me to safety. She could hear the firefighters crashing through the wreckage to get to her. Over here, she shouted again. Ramona could see the shapes of the firefighters coming forward in the dark, <clears throat> knocking. Coming uh, forward in the dark, knocking aside desks and chairs and filing cabinets. The water sprayed from their hoses, sizzled, and turned to stream as Ramona could see the shapes of the firefighters coming through the dark knocking aside desks and chairs and climbing cabinets. The water sprayed from their hoses sizzled and turned to steam as it hit the flames, adding to the chaotic scene. But after a moment, two of them emerged like goats and crouched next to her. Praise God. I am so grateful to see you, Ramona cried. One firefighter said, just stay close. The other firefighter slid his arm around her and stood up. We'll get you out of here. Stick with me. In between coughs, Ramona said, thank you, God. God is good. God is so good. When the text poses the question, when have you spontaneously praised God after an emotional event? Beth, Minister Beth, though you like to be called Beth, can you think of a time when after <clears throat> something happened, something emotional that you went through and Praises to God just escaped through your lips, where it's just spontaneously, you just, thank you, Jesus. Yeah, when Easter, when my son was at an Easter egg hunt, and he reached down to uh, 
reached for an egg and fell, and the brick that was on top of the brick that was on top of there fell on top of him too, and cut his head wide open. And I just started praising. I and I had just come from a concert at church and praising God, and I kept praising him and, and praying that you know that he wasn't dead and that it wouldn't um, scar him emotionally. And, but he turned out just fine. He went to the hospital. He didn't. They just had to sew him up, and he was fine. Well, that is a reason to praise God. You know, <clears throat> it reminds me of a story of a preacher that was telling me how he uh, ran outside and saw his baby floating in the pool, dead, or saw his baby floating in the pool. And he went out there and grabbed the baby and started giving him mouth to mouth, and, and the baby choked. And he was like, God, you are good. You are so good. And he said he heard the Spirit asking, would I still be good if your baby was gone? So we give God praise when uh, good things happen. Sometimes it's hard to give God praise when bad things happen and realize that regardless of what the situation, our God is still a good God. Regardless of what you're going through, you have to recognize that this God has your best mind and interest. Later on, they're going to ask a question of the difference between the God of the, of the Israelites, the God of the Hebrews, and the gods of the uh, surrounding nations. Well, the main one is he's real. <laughs> and he is a giver of good gifts, and he rewards those diligently that seek him. Um, and I just answered the question that we haven't even asked yet, but that's just how I feel about my God. He is amazing, and it's really hard to contain yourself when you think about him. Um, you got to keep him in mind. And, and like I said, we're going to be reading from Exodus chapter 15, verses 11 through 21. We're going to be talking about Moses and Miriam, his sister, and his brother Aaron. Uh, but while we're reading, I would like you to keep in mind verse number 11, which says, Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness? Fearful in praises, doing wonders. That is the difference between our God and all these other little G think gods. He is glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, and doing wonders. Who is like him? So, before we begin reading, um, I would first of all like to give uh, disclosure. Uh, uh, I forgot what the word is. Where the, we're reading out of the Amplified. We don't have the, uh, I'm not going to be reading out of the New Life Translation today um, because I don't have the New Life Translation. So it's either King James or the Amplified. So to break it down, we're going to go with the Amplified. Um, but to go ahead and put it in context, we'll read the background. And the background reads as such. <clears throat> Over roughly 400 years, the 70 members of Jacob's family had moved from Canaan to Egypt. Had, who had moved from Canaan to Egypt had grown to over 600,000 strong. That can be found in Exodus chapter 12, verse 37. That's, almost, that's the size of Washington, D.C. They grew from the size of 70 members to about the size of Washington, D.C. They lived freely in Goshen, which is in Egypt, until a new pharaoh came to power. He was unaware of the life-saving role that Joseph, one of Jacob's sons, Israel's sons, had played in saving Egypt and surrounding countries from famine. Threatened by this growing population, pharaoh tried to decrease their numbers through genocide and enslavement. Does that sound familiar to y'all? The people prayed for salvation from oppression. God answered, upholding the promise he had made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whose name had been changed to Israel. Though through a man called Moses, God performed ten mighty acts that forced Pharaoh to end the Israelite slavery. But Pharaoh couldn't accept the fact that he had been defeated by the God of slaves. 
the God of slaves had overturned the, the strongest government in the world at that time. He set out to find and kill them. He was furious. At first, they wanted to destroy them because they were running, there were too many of them. And, and so he put them in slavery and started genocide. Then when he had an opportunity to get rid of them, he was so distraught by the fact that he had been beaten by the God of slaves, he wanted to go get them and kill them. So uh, he set out to find and kill them. And in an epic act of salvation, y'all know the story, God walled back the waters of the Red Sea, giving the Israelites safe passage uh, across the final barrier that blocked their exodus, which is the reason for the name of the book. The same waters drowned their oppressors. To memorialize God's phenomenal intervention on their behalf, Moses and Miriam led the Israelites in a song of exuberant praise. And like I said, we're going to study that today, and we're going to go over the, the song of praise and how God, how there's power in praise. Uh, and there's a word that, that keeps popping up in here in this lesson that I was looking at a, a minister today, a preacher talking, and he was saying, he was talking about a song. It was Joel Osteen. He was talking about his, these writers, his, these songwriters in his church that had wrote this song about God called Unrivaled. And he was like, I have, you know, I've never heard that word used in reference to God. But yes, he is unrivaled. There's no one like him. He has, he's not, he's not just number one and then there's a number two. You know, rivals, they sometimes, Nebraska has a rivalry with Iowa. Sometimes we beat them. Lately, that's been rare. And sometimes they beat us. God is unrivaled. Nobody beats him. There's not a number one and then a close number two. There's number one. God, and then way down the line, there might be somebody else. But God is completely unrivaled. And you'll see that word popping up in this lesson quite often because truth be told, God is absolutely unrivaled. Amen? Amen. So we're going to begin reading uh, verses, just the first two verses, I believe. Uh, we're going to begin reading verses 11 through 13 in the 15th chapter of Exodus. And uh, keep in mind, we will be reading from the Amplified Version. Uh, it just breaks, it just breaks it down a little bit. And that will be read by the beautiful minister. Who is like you among the gods, O Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in splendor, working wonder, wonders? You stretched out your right hand. The sea swallowed them. You, in your loving kindness and goodness, have led the people whom you have redeemed. In your strength, you have guided them with care to your holy habitation. The people have heard about you. They tremble. Anguish and fear has gripped the inhabitants of Philistasia. Thank you, Minister Bell. Um, <laughs> another difference I was just thinking about uh, between my God and uh, the other fake gods talks about how these gods are in the world these, these, these gods the world holds these gods my God holds the world and, and it says it in this verse the world is in his hand the earth is in his hand that's my God now, the in-depth, um, there's three in-depths for these verses, and the in-depth that correlates with uh, what Minister Beth just read is one that is titled, Sing to Gain Strength. <laughs> sing to Gain Strength. What was the song we were singing, uh, listening to on the way here? Sing till the power of the Lord comes down. Sometimes, I've noticed that when I'm in a bad mood, I have this habit that I've gained from my mother of singing constantly. I sometimes can't make it stop. However, 
It is a mood altering uh, action. If you sing, you can change your mood sometimes. Uh, music does that. And the Bible said, the word says that God inhabits the praises of his people. So you can literally sing till the power of the Lord comes down. And, and I've practiced it, and sometimes it's a little overwhelming when he, he comes into your room. <laughs> really. But that's the power, my God. Sometimes you can't feel him and you just have to know he's there. And sometimes you feel him and you can't deny the fact that he's there. Now, this first, uh, the first in-depth uh, starts as such, reads as such. The Egyptian culture was known for its numerous gods and goddesses. There was a sun god who was responsible for light and a goddess who was in charge of fertility. Another goddess brought the rain, and Pharaoh himself was to be a, uh, believed to be a god. All of these are little g-gods. He was believed to be the god who had power over all the inhabitants of the land. But for the people who had just experienced deliverance and witnessed the annihilation of their oppressors, no god surpassed their god. He was unrivaled, not only in his power, but also in his holiness, hallelujah, and his worthiness to be praised. God had wiped out their enemies, and that new reality gave them the courage and strength to sing about a future unlike their past. The song of praise was also a song of hope. They looked forward, confident that their victorious God would guide them and bring them to a place where they would dwell in God's holy presence. The text poses the question, how has our past experience with God shaped your outlook about the future? Minister Beth? Um, no matter if something is bad or good, um, you still got to praise. Um, you just praise him all the time and thank him, you know, for even the bad stuff that happens uh, in your life. Know, good or bad. Good or bad, yes. Because regardless of what you've gone through in the past, I mean, it's if God has delivered you in the past, he doesn't change. And he will continue to deliver you. So that kind of changes the outlook you have for the future when things are, are bleak and you can't really figure out how you're going to get out of things. If God brought you out before, he'll bring you out again, Correct. Correct. So, we're going to continue reading, and again, that's in Exodus chapter 15, verse, we're going to read verses 14 through 18, and that will be read by the beautiful Minister Beth, 14 through 18. And strangely enough, even though we're reading from the Amplified Version, it is pretty much the King James Version because this is a song. A lot of this is a song. Um, so we're going to be reading now verses 14 through 18. Minister Beth. <clears throat> the people have heard about you. They tremble. Anguish and fear has gripped the inhabitants of Philistasia. Then the tribal chiefs of Edom were dismayed and horrified. The mighty leaders of Moab, trembling, grips them. All the inhabitants of the Canaan have melted away in despair. Terror and dread fall on them. Because of the greatness of your arm, they are as still as a stone. Until your people pass by and into Canaan, O Lord, until the people pass by whom you have purchased. You will bring them into the land of promise and plant them on the mountain. Mount Moriah in Jerusalem of your inheritance. The place, O oh Lord, you have made for your dwelling among them. The sanctuary, O oh Lord, which your hands have established. The Lord shall reign to eternity and beyond. 
The Lord shall reign from eternity to the hour. I love these, uh, what, what you just read. <laughs> it talks about how the people here, what you have, what you have done for your people, how other people have heard what you've done, how you led us out, how you gave us a promised land and uh, destroyed the uh, people that were behind us and sent us over here, and people are scared of them. The mighty leaders of Moab are trim trembling, grips them. All the inhabitants of Canaan, who would be, who would, it would become the land of the Israelites, they fall away and they melted away in despair. Terror and dread fall on them because of the greatness of your arm. That's my God. And this is the part I love. It's your people pass by into Canaan. You have made it safe until they pass by into their promised land. And these are the people whom you have purchased. Do you know that you've been bought? I've been bought by the, by the most precious element in the universe, the blood of the Lamb. And that's how God bought me. And God bought them as well. They put that, they put the blood on the doorpost and they were purchased as well by faith. Now we're going to uh, read the in-depth for those verses that we just read and it is under the second heading which is titled Seen to be Heard. Hmm. I haven't even noticed that title on kind of take it personal because just to be honest sometimes if I'm in the right mood or in the wrong mood I just go to the gas station and, and sit out there and sing gospels <clears throat> at the top of my lungs and people will be like <laughs> and they come up and say sir you just made my day thank you <laughs> and it's just something about sharing I mean, even if you're not directly saying, God has delivered me this week, you don't know what I've been through. Just to hear somebody, I, I walk around the store, I don't care. I walk to Walmart singing about God. I don't care if I'm looking funny or people are like, oh, that brother singing. I don't care because God has delivered me from a dragon. I don't care. And I let you know. So I sing. And sometimes you have to sing to be heard. On their journey, the formerly enslaved people were going to meet people from other nations. News of God's mighty acts would have reached these nations before the Israelites actually arrived. So they heard about them. the power of their God and his, the, the word of what he had done preceded these people. So uh, how would the Canaanites respond? The native people that they were coming across, how would they respond? Would they realize that God was God? Or would their fear lead to violent actions? The fitting response when learning about God's manifested power and goodness is holy reverence. Such an example is Rahab, the prostitute who protected the spies sent to assess Canaan. By the time the children of Israel reached Jericho years later, she was able to recount the incident at the Red Sea. So by the time they got there, she could tell them, hey, I already heard about y'all. <laughs> she was shook, and everybody around her was shook. And she recognized that your God is the real God. So she helped them out. The testimony embedded in this song has preceded the spies and secured their safety and the safety of Rahab and her family. She is one of the uh, she was inducted into the Hall of Faith, Hebrews 11. Um, the song at the Red Sea was a testimony meant to be shared so that the others would hear, trust, and worship God. Amen. So sometimes when you sing about God, it's not about you. Somebody can hear something that may cause them to think about this God. God, Jesus said, I will draw all men unto me. It's not our job to draw them. It is just our job to let them know about the goodness of God and what he's done for us. So when you tell somebody about God, when you sing about God, when you do something that is good and it is in the name of Jesus, you are giving them God. I mean, 
they may only see Christ when they see you. Because Christ sometimes is rare in the world. Jesus said, when I come back, will, I, will faith be found in this world? Well, if you, if you exhibit faith and you walk in faith, even just for a moment, that may be all that you need to do for God to draw somebody to him. So just sometimes sing to be heard, talk to be heard. It's, it's, it's politically incorrect to even say the name Jesus or talk about God in public. Well, I'm going to be politically incorrect for the rest of my life because I refuse to be quiet about what he's done for me, what he's done for my family. I'm not blind. I see the blessing that God has given. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to be uh, mute and not tell somebody about the goodness of Jehovah God and his marvelous son, Christ Jesus. And if you got a problem with it, take it up with my daddy. <laughs> Amen. So we're going to continue. We're going to actually conclude our reading of the Bible verses from uh, verses 19 and 21. So if I can get it pulled up, Minister Beth. 19 and 21. <clears throat> For the horses of Pharaoh went with his war chariots and his charioteers into the sea, and the Lord brought back the waters of the sea on them. But the sons of Israel walked on dry land in the middle of the sea. Then Miriam, of the prophetess, the sister of Aaron and Moses, took a tremble in her hand, and all the women followed her with trembles and dancing. <clears throat> Miriam answered them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously and is highly exalted. The horse and its rider he has hurled into the sea. Amen. Thank you, Minister Ben. So Miriam, just start praising God. Just singing. Uh, maybe I should call Mama Miriam. <laughs> At home, she would, well, I'm telling you, growing up, she would sing all day. We would, I mean, especially when we were on Saturdays, it was the day to clean the house, gospel music was blaring, and she would walk around singing gospel. Uh, we would go to the mall, listening to gospel. She would sing gospel, walking through the mall. She praised him, regardless of who heard her. You know, and I picked up that habit, and I thank my mother for that. So, um, the third heading, the third and final heading is sing to remember God's goodness. Amen. So, that reads as such. Miriam was Moses' sister. She was a courageous woman who, as a child, defied Pharaoh's horrific decree to kill the firstborn uh, lost my mind, sorry. to kill the firstborn of the uh, male baby to kill the male babies uh, when her mother I always have problems with his name Jochebed placed her brother Moses in a water tight basket and put him in the Nile River Miriam kept an eye on the basket and when Pharaoh's daughter found the baby and wanted to keep him Miriam with the daughter's consent ran to get her mother to nurse him Jochebed was able to rear Moses and share him with share with him his true heritage. Imagine that blessing. Hurt their children were the boys were being killed. All the baby boys put this baby in faith in the basket in, a, in the water in the Nile River and just pray, God, please don't let my baby die. And Pharaoh's daughter came and got him. <laughs> This is Fresh Prince. Can I keep him? Yes. Yeah, so and not only that, not only did he get to grow up in Pharaoh's household, which isn't always great, but his mother, Jochebed, got to share with him his heritage. So she also got to help nurse and raise her child and let him know really who you are. Now, how many mothers do that? Get to raise their child and let them know who you are. I know my mother did. She let me know you are the child of the Most High God. Sometimes it didn't feel like it, but she's like, hey, hey, who are you? 
don't know. <laughs> you know, I am a child of God, and sometimes we forget that. So, she had the opportunity to teach her child that. Uh, now, years later, Miriam was at her brother's side. She could trace God's deliverance in the past to the joys of freedom she and the all Israelites were experiencing that day. Imagine that. 400 years of slavery, oppression, genocide. They just down these people. Then one day, God delivered them. How could they not but spontaneously break out in praise? Using their unique gifts, God had given her as a, a, a prophetess, musician, and a dancer. Miriam led a chorus of singers and dancers who recounted the triumphant victory of their God. Amen. Uh, the text poses the questions. What are some ways that you have celebrated God's liberating grace in your life? Can I just ask you that question? Yep, by telling people about him. Hmm. Okay. Well, there's another question. <laughs> Let's get this question. Name a time when your faith has been strengthened by someone's testimony. <clears throat> Amen. Um, I remember my grandmother telling me about my cousin when he was a baby. His mother was murdered. And, uh, my uncle wasn't ready to keep a baby. He was still staying with his mom. <laughs> uh, but my grandma said uh, she went to court and the state was coming to take the baby. Took the baby. Uh, the state took the baby. You know, he's still my cousin. And she went into the bathroom at the courthouse and prayed. She's like, I just prayed right there in the courthouse. And my God entered to the, the stall with me. And <clears throat> he supplied my needs. And that baby never spent one day in state's custody. Uh, she really didn't, you know, at, at one point she's like, I know this baby's coming with me. I don't know how that's going to work out, but I, I expect my God to do it. And he did it. And I basically, I used that later with my own daughter because her mother refused to let me see her. And it was Easter. It was a tearful Easter. I stood there at the door. And I'm like, me and my daughter were talking through the door. And and I couldn't get to see my daughter. I had an Easter basket for her. And so I was a subset. So I was about to oh, come and kill you. <laughs> so I went home. To, uh, went actually to my aunt's house, uh, to my aunt Stacy, and we went. I, I, I'm going to go get a gun. I was going to go get a, a weapon and go kick in this girl's door and take my daughter by force. Not thinking, even though my grandmother had told me how her works. My mother and my aunt both stopped me and said, "Hey, we don't do it like that in this house. We don't do that in this family. We pray." And my mom said, "Well, give me my baby." And she's like, "Who are you?" <sighs> Son of God, I'm child of God. So let's pray. So we stood there and we prayed in that kitchen. I didn't get to see my daughter that day. I didn't get to see her for about two weeks when her mother came and dropped her off and never came back. So that's how God can work. You know, uh, sometimes we want to take things into our own hand, but we have to think about what God has done for others and for ourselves in the past and stop and quit trying to take control and let God have the will because I'm a crash dummy, so I'm bound to run into something. But if I let God drive, uh, I guarantee you success. Now, uh, we're going to search the scriptures real quick. Oh, great. And I will pull it up. <laughs> That's great. Get this disappearing on me. I apologize. Um, we are currently waiting for our uh, precepts for living books. They will be delivered soon. So if you have an order in, Please get in touch with uh, Reverend White, and she will be able to let you know when they get here. And if you're interested in ordering, please give her a call. Uh, come up to the church, call up to the church, and speak to Minister. I'm sorry, Reverend White, and she will be able to uh, let you know in more detail about uh, when the next when the next books are coming for this new season. Unfortunately, they are just a little bit late, but due to COVID. I don't know, things are never running smoothly, but regardless, the name of God shall be praised. So, uh, in the search of the scriptures, it says, well, we've already answered this question, sorry. Name three ways 
the Lord God is different from the so-called gods other nations worshipped. And I just started listing a bunch of them. <laughs> He's real. He is a, uh, a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He is the true and living God. Uh, I said that the world holds all these gods. My God holds the world. There's, a, there's infinite ways that God is, is different than these little G-gods, uh, Buddha, Confucius, uh, Pharaoh, whoever it is. He is not a God like my God. As I said, as this says, my God is unrivaled. There's not a number one and a number two. There's number one, and he created number two and everybody else. So that's the difference. And the second question is, what will be the response of other nations when they hear of God's victory for the Israelites? They were scared. Just like Rahab said, it, they were shook. The Moabs were living in trembling fear of the Moabites. Uh, the people in Canaan were scared. They the, the power of God and his uh, the story of what he had done for his people preceded these people. And it's the same with us. Sometimes people be like, girl, how you get that, that Cadillac is nice. That's the glory of God. That God gave me that. I didn't go work for it. You know, uh, sometimes cancer runs through people's bodies. and But our God can take that cancer away. And people are like, oh, you did it. No, I did not. My God did that. And we have to realize that all of our victories are not ours. They're not something that we've done. The uh, Israelite people didn't hold the Red Sea up by their own hand. The hand of Jehovah God held it up. The hand of Jehovah God has delivered men from cancer, from uh, lion's dens, from from fiery infernos, from slavery, God is still in the delivering business. And we have to recognize that it's he that has delivered us and not we ourselves. And we give him glory. And when you tell other people about this, they'll receive that and he can draw them unto them. Now we're going to go into the discuss the meaning, uh, small portion, to just basically talk about what we've uh, gone through really quickly. And it's, uh, it's read this stuff. Victory for the Israelites also brought about the annihilation of others. Egyptian families lost loved ones in that day. Some of those were innocent people. They just lived there, but they didn't know about our God. They perished. And it's the same today. In Matthew 5, verse 43, Jesus tells his listeners that they are to love their enemies and pray for those who despitefully use them and persecute them. Number one, compare and contrast the context and attitudes towards violence between, toward violence between today's text and Jesus' words in Matthew 43 through 45. Let me go through those real quickly. Um, but it talks about how um, there are people who are perishing every day. And I, I worry about that myself. I mean, like, people in India, they were raised Hindu, born Hindu, their parents were Hindu, their grandparents were Hindu. All they know is the Hindu religion. And they hear something about this man, Jesus, that is delivering. Now, you're like, well, they're not going to go away from what they already, what they've known all their life. And... Um, there are people who are zealous about their faith. In fact, to the point where they'll run into a building with a bomb strapped to them, believing it's for the glory of God. Now, it's not our, our, uh, it's not our job to try and understand them. It's not our job to try and change them. It's our job to do God's work. Whatever he tells us to do, that still small voice, uh, the signs that you see, whatever it is he tells you to do, we are supposed to be obedient. And the rest is up to him. He'll draw them unto him. If we're in the building when that man runs in there screaming, I love walk bar, that's all right, whatever. I get to live for eternity. But that man, he didn't know Christ, you know? So our job is to just live, to put on Christ. 
that others may see him in us. It's not our job to force anybody to know uh, who the true God is because that's where wars come from. And our God is a God of peace. But <laughs> there have been instances in this Bible <laughs> he says, go in there and kill everything. Don't leave nothing breathing. And don't bring nothing out. We don't want to see him like that. We do want to see this God of peace. So put on Christ and walk in peace. Now, um, I love this liberating lesson. Minister Beth, there is one more question uh, under the disgust meaning. It says, in our modern context, how are we to respond when our enemies fall into unfortunate situations? <clears throat> Pray for them. I have, I hate to call anybody my enemy, but there are people who I know just, I don't know, they don't hate me or what, but whatever. Um, and when misfortune falls to them, I don't like to feel like, ah, that's what you get. But it, it does happen, and I feel bad about it. And then I end up praying for them. And the, the way that I felt about them changes. When you start to pray for your enemies, something in you happens. I mean, okay, our God hears our prayers, and he may very well bless that person, answer your prayers towards that person. But I've just realized, like just now, that when we are praying for our enemies, it's not even really about our enemies. It is about us and what we receive, how something, how God changes something in us. When you see someone who has, uh, who wants to see you fall, and you feel a certain way about them, and that eats you up inside. When you pray about them, that thing that eats you up inside changes. The hatred and the dislike that you had toward them dissipates. So uh, let's pray for our enemies. I'm going to uh, quickly read the liberating lesson. Uh, Minister Beth, do you need glasses? <clears throat> In Harriet, the Moses of her people, biographer Sarah Hopkins Bradford, states that one of the favorite songs of the Bosnian Harriet Tubman was Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. Coded in his verses was a message of salvation from oppression, the Underground Railroad, a network of places and people who helped enslave African Americans escape the horrors of the South, it was a sweet chariot that would be swinging low or coming to the South. It was going to carry home or take to the North those to get on board. Listening with hope, enslaved men, women, children set out on a journey toward freedom for themselves and their descendants. What songs can you share with others that offer a message of hope and freedom found in Christ? Uh. I am free, pray the Lord, I'm free. Uh, that's a song that you can, uh, that sings about the freedom that we've received through Christ Jesus. Um, I'm no longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting and it's just a blessing. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm free. I thank you for joining us for Cyber Sunday School at Mount Calvary Community Church the biggest little church in Oman. I hope that you join us next week. Again, um, our books have not come in yet. So if you are uh, waiting for a book, please give, uh, come up here, give us a call, and talk to uh, Reverend White. Also join us at 11 o'clock uh, in 15 minutes as the bishop brings our, our word today. And we are going to close as we do each day in a word of prayer. Father God, we call upon you in the name of our Savior Christ Jesus, giving you thanks, Lord God, for this lesson, for the opportunity to join together with other believers and walk through your word, Father God. Father, I pray that you inhabit the praises of your people wherever they are, Father God. Let us lift our voice and praise to you because you are a wonderful, mighty, and amazing God. Father God, all who hear me, Father God, let your Holy Spirit go into their homes right now, Father God. We declare health and prosperity on these homes. We give you praise for the mighty works that you have done for us, Father God, and you don't change. You have blessed your people from the beginning, and I know that you shall continue to do it till the end. We give you glory, honor, and praise because you are worthy. In the matchless name of our Savior Christ Jesus, amen. Amen. Again, we thank you for joining us for Cyber Sunday School, and until we see you again, be blessed. Be blessed.